<laughs> you can't decide. It's so I can't funny. decide. Okay. It's just an open-ended question, really. Um, in recent years, the first, second, fourth, ninth, and tenth amendments have all pretty much been hammered in Congress. Uh, what kind of strategy do you have to help stop Congress from basically messing with all of those amendments? <laughs> I think the reason that we're all here tonight, we have such a, a, a large number of people involved in the Tea Party across the country, is that exact reason right there. Our liberties and freedoms are being attacked all over the country, at the federal level, state level, and even the local level. We have eminent domain taking our property from us, from us. We have the internet going to be regulated. We have free speech that's being questioned. We have um, Right now, health care is being put down our throats, and there's no constitutional basis for it. What do we do? We get in there and we fight against any more encroaching legislation that does not abide by the original intent of the Constitution. you got to remember, today, the Constitution is not the same Constitution it was that the founders did. It has evolved and into this living document for the welfare clause and the... Um, the Commerce Clause, thank you very much, have been misused and abused since the since Roosevelt. And this has put us in the position that we in, we're in. So stand against any more encroaching legislation and then it's like an onion. You are gonna have we are gonna have to fight. I will fight to roll back the layers of bureaucracy and regulations and encroachments of our life. That's what it's gonna take. And we have got to dig in and fight for our lives and for our country. And that's what I'm willing to do for you. I was wondering uh, what your opinion is on the, uh, the ruling in uh, Arizona about the immigration and uh, when you get to Congress, uh, how you will behave when it comes to reform, what your ideas are on reform for all the, uh, all the immigrants who are coming to the country. What Arizona is doing? What is Arizona doing? They're, they're, they're following the federal, the federal laws. The people on the border there are, are, are being killed. There's crime. They need they need to do something. The federal government is failing because both sides of the aisle are playing chicken for the Hispanic vote. And ladies and gentlemen, that is creating a problem with, with illegal in, immigrants in this country. Uh, you know I'm a grandson of immigrants. No problem with immigration, but illegal immigration is, is costing us an estimated two hundred billion dollars a year. So what do we do? Well, we need to protect the borders. It's law. We need to use a system called E-Verify, where a prospective employer could go online and see if that employee should be here. And they need, we need to follow that. That's one, one good thing the government can do. And we need to stand down to our, our uh, allies, I say that loosely, in Mexico. Their biggest commerce is sending people here, it's sending money back, or you could argue oil one or the other. But we need to, to stop the wall and challenge them to not do that. And our president obviously didn't do that last week. He stood up with them and he's creating racial divisiveness in this country, which has to end. I am a man. Uh, the Constitution grants people every day. We have the right to be responsible for ourselves and not have a government that's going to tell us what to do all the time. And I think that's what we have to get back to. For uh, 10 years since I've been in, in politics, and I can't think of any way, in any way, that I disagree with the Republican Party platform. I think if you look at my record over the last uh, nine years in the General Assembly, I think you'll find somebody who has always fought for limited government, free markets, and individual liberty. And I think those three uh, three points sum up the Republican creed. Limited government, free markets, and individual liberty. Thank you. I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming woman and that's one thing that Virgil Goode did say that he thought would give Tom Periello a very difficult race. He said he didn't know if Tom would know what to do with me and so I kind of over the years as a basketball coach and unit chair and um, different things in life a lot of people have said you know what are you going to do with Fida because when y'all named me Feisty Fida that was pretty good. That's what a lot of people had called me coming up through life playing basketball and, and uh, fighting and digging in with spirit and a winning attitude is one thing that I'll bring to you. I don't quit. I never give up. I'm living that right in front of you right now. And I appreciate the people that have supported. And I won't give up on you in, in Congress. 
The main difference is the 20 years. Mr. Hurt has 10 years in the state senate. I have 20 years in the trenches working with people and fighting for the issues. Everything that you can name from life to limited government to every, every Republican that has run. I've been a member of the Republican Party since 1992 and worked in those circles at all different levels. I bring that experience to you. And my, it's Theda Morden. I'm not a federal program, and Theda's my first name. <laughs> <laughs> The easiest thing for me to say is the fact that I have raised four children, three boys and a girl, and I think that uh, the, the testimony that I feel from them is they're, they're all very successful, they're employed, and uh, they don't live at home anymore. <laughs> I think that, that in addition to that, you know, I've got a record here locally and people have seen how I've conducted myself on the Board of Supervisors, and that's one thing that's very important to me is to be very ethical in everything that you do and to be very honest. When you say you're going to do something, you do it. And my record has proved that, and I'll stand behind that. Thank you. The very fact that I'm running, because I've called myself a conservative uh, primarily before I call myself a Republican, is not that the Democratic Party has let us down. We all know that. We know their game plan. It's that the Republican Party, I think since 1996, maybe before too, has failed us miserably. When we talk about the inability to reduce taxes, the inability to make government smaller, the inability to stop spending, the encroachment on our 10th Amendment rights, we can go on and on and on with the Republican Party, has not done right. I believe, to, to a certain degree, uh, that it is an establishment, and it's a, it's a club, and you have to be part of the club. I personally have had some things published where I've questioned that. I didn't get a card from the NRCC this year because of that. I don't expect you next year. Uh, I believe that a, a, a person needs to make a personal choice of ethics when they get in the office and represent their constituents and in, in this case represent the core conservative uh, principles and not follow what the party will do. And I've certainly exhibited in the time that I've, uh, I've run to do that and I think it has to change one representative at a time so before we can change both Congress and the Senate to represent the people and not their parties. Thank you. Uh, how am I going to prolong Medicare and Medicaid? My plan is to privatize them. That's the only hope. Right now, what the Democrats have done with these social welfare programs, they set them up to fail dangerously. You know, in the military, uh, when you uh, have a munition, you have uh, uh, several streams that, that the uh, arming device goes through, and if anything fails, it fails safe. In other words, the weapon will no longer arm and can no longer detonate if anything fails along the way. What Democrats have set up with our social welfare program is to fail dangerously. If anything goes wrong, they fail in a catastrophic manner. We just recently had in Arizona where uh, the uh, Mayo Clinic down there was losing $800 million a year, but the government not paying for the Medicare patients that were coming in. And they finally said no more Medicare patients. So now you have people in their, in their senior years, 60, 70, 80 years old, that can no longer go to the most convenient place for them and the place they've been going for years before because we have a system that's now failing catastrophically. If we don't do something, it will fail catastrophically. Well, no one in Medicare is going to receive adequate health care. We've got to start looking at, at, at free market solutions, and I don't have time in a minute to tell you I what know. they are. <laughs> Thank you. This gentleman here.